Joining me now in the Situation Room, Timothy Jorgensen, who is Associate Professor of Radiation Medicine at Georgetown University. So much attention on these workers who are in that plant, which we know is leaking radiation to one degree or another. It's been called a suicide mission, is it? Well, I think, yes, it is, because the, yesterday I heard in the media that the Japanese officials said they may ask these workers to sustain a lethal dose in completing their task. So in that sense, it is a suicide mission if they end up doing that. And if there is a lethal dose, is it, do people die immediately from radiation exposure, or is it, I mean, we've seen sort of long, slow, horrible deaths, but what, what is the process? No, it, 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 takes, it takes days, weeks, possibly months to die from radiation, so... Uh, the first, depending upon the dose, is how soon you would see symptoms, but it's quite possible that workers continue, could continue to work for a week or two more, even though they sustain a lethal dose of radiation. But they're protected. We've seen, uh, we saw earlier the suits and the hazmat suits and the masks. Is it possible that they could come out without radiation exposure damage. The workers are continuously monitored for radiation. They, as, you, as you've seen, they carry these dosimeters. They know what the radiation doses are all the time. When they move into a high area, these, these dosimeters go off to tell them they're in a high area. There's only a total, a certain total cumulative dose that they can sustain. sustain Even with they, all the equipment they yeah, have on? The, the, those, that equipment is mostly to stop them from breathing particulate radiation. It's not going to shield them from gamma rays or neutrons or other things that are in the environment. So. Um, there's only a limited amount of personal protection that they can wear. They really have to limit their time in a certain area. That's how, that's how they get protected. And finally, we've got about 20 seconds here. Uh, the radiation exposure possibilities for someone, say, in Tokyo, uh, is there a danger there from what we see so far? I mean, a worst case scenario is that there would be a large emission of radiation if, and the, the wind conditions would be just right to blow that towards Tokyo. God forbid that that would happen. Uh, prevailing winds tend to be out over the ocean, so the odds are pretty good that it's not going to go to Tokyo, okay? But it's an un unclear situation. Thanks so much, Timothy Jones. We have to watch and sort of see what happens with those winds and everything else. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.